a little uh, shop acquisition segment here. Got a cool little hammer. It's a Lixie. Um, I had never heard of him before, but uh, then I found him in McMaster Car and all this. So they're, I guess they're sort of an industry standard. Um, I just thought it was a really nice, you know, U.S. made hammer with uh, different hardness tips. You can also get red tips, I found out. Um, and they all have different hardness ratings. Uh, this, this green one is uh, softer than the black one. When I picked it up, it was actually in pretty near new condition. I've actually been using it around the shop. Uh, it comes in really handy. Anyway, turns out I got a good deal on it. It was I paid ten bucks for it, and it turns out they sell for like forty-five. But they're uh, nice little hammers. I like it. It's <clears throat> a little in antique um, indicator stand. Now uh, I don't know whether that indicator. It's on it. It's salvageable. I know there's a guy that uh, folks send their indicators to. Um, I've heard uh, you know Tom Lipton talked about him, um, and I think some other folks have used him, but if nothing else, <clears throat> pretty sure this one's salvageable, and it's the same. Not exactly the same. Not the same vintage. I don't think. Same brand though. And the same back pattern, so I should be able to uh, swap that back onto this one. Uh, and this one's definitely one that I can clean up, or have cleaned up, depending on how much I want to try to get into that myself. <clears throat> so I think this will look really nice cleaned up. force that it needs to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so this uh, rotates up and down, rises and lowers. I get this working, and uh, this little lever actuates the, uh, the plunger. That's pretty cool. I think that'll be a neat little piece cleaned up. So I'll try to get an after shot at some point here. And then uh, something that's really cool to me is this uh, cast iron surface plate, which is not perfect, but it's better than anything I got. I had previously. So, uh, I'm happy to have it. And I, somebody even made this nice wooden cover that I think uh, should clean up. Uh, I was told it came out of a boat shop. The guy had a Sheldon lathe and a, a bridge port and bandsaw in one section of his uh, boat shop. And, yeah, this looks like something he made. I don't know what kind of wood that is. Looks like maybe a mixture. Oh, it looks like, I want to say oak. I was going to say pine looking at that. It might be just a mixture of stuff. Literally had some scraps laying around. This part's like a furniture grade plywood. And you put some uh, ventilation slots in here so that uh, this wouldn't just trap moisture on the top. So that's probably a pretty good design. <clears throat> well, I'll clean it up, see how it looks. Uh, and eventually, when I uh, clear the uh, six inch lathe out, I think this will go over there with uh, a couple toolboxes, and the vise will go back over there, and it'll all, it'll all work out very well. Kind of cool. So there's your before, and we'll see how well it cleans up. Hey, 
Hey, look. I fixed that uh, dial on the comparator. Pretty nice, huh? Yeah. There's the original. I found what I'm pretty sure is the same exact one on eBay. It's an Ames 207. I was the only bidder. Got it for like 10 bucks, I think, but then 7 bucks shipping, so. Um, the uh, What I think probably made it uh, not interesting to a lot of folks was that um, I think it's purpose built for one of these stands, and <clears throat> it's only got an eighth inch throw, one eighth inch. So it's it's very very precise. This is one of those items I have no idea that I'll ever use. This is more of a, a desk curi curiosity sort of thing, but it cleaned up nicely. Um, It's really for like a production setting. If you're making a bunch of different, you know, parts to a certain spec, then I think you would uh, use something like this. That's my guess. You know, I'm kind of speculating here, but um, it's pretty cool. I just, you know, now that I have it all together, I don't know that I'll ever really have a use for it. Sure is pretty though, isn't it? With that very small throw that it has, you know, it's going to have a very limited applicability. It'll go down to, let's see how far. Okay, it's bottoming out. Now, if I screw it further, the screw is actually coming out the bottom and raising the base, which is not obviously what you want. So you've got about an eighth of an inch travel, I mean, you know, eighth of an inch space here. I mean, it's probably for for measuring purposes, you're going to have to bring it up to zero to begin with, and from there, you've got less than an eighth of an inch to measure. So it's only for a very limited applicability. But within that range, it's very precise. So it's pretty cool. All right. Here we go. So here's something I thought was kind of funny. I went to um, the local uh, sports authority. I guess all sports authorities are going out of business. So they had this, you know, seventy percent off, uh, and it was the store was pretty picked through. I really wanted to get some running shoes, but those were all gone. But I'm looking over in the fishing section, and it's been picked through pretty well too. But I saw this thing here. It's the toothproof, toothproof hard wire shear, you know, for uh, cutting fishing leaders. And uh, I was like, wow, you know, if something could cut fishing leaders, let's take a look at it. And although it's sold as a uh, American fishing wire. It's actually a Zuron, and I could see it said "Made in USA." I don't know if you can read that in there. So that intrigued me enough to spend. The, it ended up being six dollars and fifty cents, I think. You know. Um, so I went and looked it up. Yeah, I mean, it's a. It's just a generic wire cutter that they're marketing for fishing, and. Uh, yeah, it's got a pretty good reputation. I don't do a lot of uh, cutting of fishing wire, but uh, I cut uh, guitar strings and I cut uh, welding wire, and so I thought uh, this would be pretty neat. I'm going to grab some welding wire. Let's try it real quick. Alright, so here we go. Oh yeah, it does very well. Much better than the uh, needle nose that I've been using. And the nice thing is it's spring-loaded, so when you're using those thick um, welding gloves, it's kind of, I get kind of fumbly messing with the regular. And eventually I'm going to get the regular, uh, I think Irwin, is it Irwin of Ice Grip? Makes it really good, or highly regarded. Just MIG pliers that have all the functions in it. Yeah, cool deal.
kind of lucky uh, on Christmas yesterday. You see that? The Dorian tool post. It's brand new. The gentleman who owned it said he had bought it 16 years ago. He was going to, uh, set up a shop and he just never did um, and now he and his wife have downsized and bought a condo so he's selling all his stuff he's gonna send me some pictures of some other things he has but anyway brand new with four holders 200 bucks so I jumped on that as I thought I should. Come on. Pretty good. So now my Chinese one, actually I'm not sure whether the long thread goes here or here. I think it actually goes out here. Yeah, I'll reverse that later. Anyway, my Chinese one will be going on eBay before too long. Unless I decide to keep it just as something to put on the lathe in case so I sell that lathe. I'll keep my good tool post. This is a Dorian tool holder. Very nice. Made in US. This is the size I use, by the way. It's the AXA. SDN 25 AXA. Made in USA. And these four tool holders are all Armstrong, which is interesting. I've never even realized that Armstrong made tool holders for quick change tool posts. I've got a whole set of the ones that go in the um, lantern tool posts. This is neat, it's their threader. I've got this version, I've got a version of this that uh, goes, uh, you know, on a lantern tool post, but it's neat, you just, uh, once you've used a, up your, your tip, you file it down a little bit, and rotate a little bit. I'm looking forward to using that. That's that's a score. Uh, the knurler, I you know, I'll probably use it. I keep wanting to buy a scissor type because the bad thing about these types of knurlers, it's a good one. You know, it's much better than the Chinese one that I've got. It's got three different patterns that uh, index. It's neat, but you're putting all that pressure against your your work. Uh, the scissor type avoids that, and so I'm probably going to end up buying one of the scissor types. Cut-off tool. Very nice. Armstrong. And then this fellow, which at first glance I thought was a boring tool holder, but later I noticed it had this slot back there, and I said, wait a second. That's a Morse taper, too. So that is cool. I watched uh, RP Mechanics uh, do a video in which he talked about buying one of these for his uh, 618. And I can't remember what he was saying was the advantage of using your drill on your carriage rather than your tail post. I'm going to go back and look at that episode again. Um, but hey. If I run into that situation, he talks about, I've got one. So I'm pretty psyched. He's a nice guy. The guy's name is Danny. Uh, and he's, uh, he and his wife Norma are kicking back in a condo now, downsizing. I totally get it. Uh, it's probably going to happen to me one day, and I'll have to get rid of all this stuff. <laughs> so for now, I get to play with it. I'm happy.